Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at noon. New at noon, a former police officer in the Northern Valley is facing multiple charges, including kidnapping and criminal sexual conduct. Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Jordan Schreer. Joshua Demmerly worked for the War Road Police Department when court documents say he sexually assaulted a teenager multiple times. Documents also say he would text the victim threatening suicide if the two didn't get together. Reports also say he provided alcohol to juveniles. He's now charged with kidnapping, criminal sexual conduct, and stalking. Each charge carries a possible 10 years in prison if convicted. His next court appearance is April 23rd. Taking that live look outside right now, blue skies, a nice change from the snow that some of us woke up to this morning. To see what we can expect for the rest of our day, let's check in with meteorologist Lisa Green. Yes, that was another rude awakening for some of us. We heard from a viewer in Carrington who said they had about an inch of snow there from last night's round. So that's been tough. Here's a look at your radar and satellite map right now. You can see on our visible satellite that we are looking at some snow uh, still on the ground. A decent snowpack in areas, especially northwest Minnesota. And, of course, that means we have clear skies as we just saw and a good view of the current status of that snowpack. Here's a look at our temperatures. 33 degrees in Fargo, 32 in Grand Forks. There are many places already warming above freezing in the Southern Valley. And for the most part, our wind is pretty light. It is a little bit more brisk in Bemidji and in Rosa, where we're seeing winds gusting into the upper teens. Here's a look at your hourly planner. We're going to see some numbers on their way into the upper 30s, even some low 40s for the Southern Valley for your highs for today and gradually clouds build in and the wind will pick up by tomorrow morning with some changes on the way in the forecast. Well, details on that coming up in just a little bit. Look forward to it. Thank you, Lisa. More low lying roads near the Red River and Fargo Moorhead are going underwater. The Third Street underpass in downtown Moorhead is now closed from Woodlawn Park to the Moorhead Center Mall. Flood water is covering much of that stretch. The North Broadway Bridge is also blocked. The Red River is over 23 feet, and that's when that Broadway bridge will start flooding. The next roads to close will be River Shore Drive in Moorhead under I-94 and the 12th and 15th Avenue North Bridge. One man is in jail after a robbery in Fargo earlier this morning. Officers were called to the 1700 block of 3rd Avenue North just before 3.30 this morning. Police say both the victim and the suspect were on bikes and that the victim was threatened with a knife. Officers then arrested 19-year-old Crispin Baker after a short chase. Police are investigating the death of a man whose body was found earlier today in a Grand Forks parking lot. Officers were on a routine patrol around 1 in the 2200 block of 24th Avenue South when they found the body. Police say there are no indications of foul play. They're asking anyone with information to contact them. Minnesota DNR officials are cringing at what ice anglers left behind on the lakes. The DNR says they have found trash on several lakes in the state, including Red Sand Lake, Long Lake in Todd County, and the Crow Wing River and Gull Lake. That's just to name a few of them. Officials say anything but an impression left on the ice is litter and it will be investigated. Minnesota Governor Tim Walz says he'll use his first state of the state address today to appeal to overcoming political gridlock. He says he'll stress the need for lawmakers from both parties in a divided legislature to work together and solve some of the state's problems. Walls is scheduled to speak to the House and Senate at 7 tonight. The governor's office says it will be the first time that a Muslim imam, a Jewish rabbi, and a Christian bishop will deliver the invocation before that State of the State address. Officials say Governor Doug Burgum has approved West Fargo Public Schools waiver for forgiveness for two snow days. West Fargo Public Schools says they will still have school on Monday, April 22nd, but will not need to add any additional days or minutes to the end of the year. The man accused of killing rapper Nipsey Hussle is now in custody after a two-day manhunt. New video shows Los Angeles County Sheriff's deputies arresting 29-year-old Eric Holder yesterday. He is expected to be charged with murder. Jamie Ucas is outside the 77th Division Police Station in L.A. where Holder spent the night. 
Los Angeles officers quickly surrounded Eric Holder and placed him in handcuffs almost 48 hours after police say he shot and killed rapper Nipsey Hussle in broad daylight. Mr. Holder walked up on more on multiple occasions and subsequently came back armed with a handgun. The suspect then fired several shots, killing Nipsey and injuring two others. Police say Holder and Nipsey previously knew each other. It appears to be a personal matter uh, between the two of them uh, in regards to a dispute, and I'll, I'll leave it at that. Holder's arrest brings some relief to a community reeling from the loss of the young hip-hop star. Circle got smaller, everybody can't go. Who made a name for himself in Los Angeles, not only for his music, but for his efforts to curb violence in the city, even as a former gang member. You killed a role model, you killed a leader, you killed somebody that was trying to save your life. Nipsey Hussle is a shining example of the best of what we can be and the best of what it means to seek and carry out a redemptive charge. Nipsey had been scheduled to meet with the police chief and the president of the city's police commission just one day after he was killed. In an email asking for the meeting, he wrote he hoped to help improve communication, relationships, and work towards changing the culture and dialogue between the LAPD and inner city. Nipsey Hussle was an artist who touched our city and the lives far beyond of the City of Angels throughout this country and this world. Officials say while Holder did have ties to gangs, authorities believe the dispute was strictly personal. The community Hustle worked to bring together is now united in grief. In our consumer alert this afternoon, as tax day approaches, millions of Americans are learning that they owe Uncle Sam more money this year. A new NerdWallet survey finds that one-third of taxpayers owe additional money beyond their withholdings. It's estimated that nearly 8 million people who got refunds last year might actually owe the IRS this year. The issue is linked to miscalculations associated with the new tax laws. On average, those who owe additional money have a bill of $2,119. Experts say the 2019 tax season has been ranked by or has been marked by more uncertainty than most due to the government shutdown and changes in the tax law. At least 6% of taxpayers say they will wait until the last possible minute to file their returns because of those new tax laws. Starting tomorrow, Verizon is launching a new cellular plan called Just Kids. It's the first plan from a major wireless provider designed to meet the needs of both parents and children. Just Kids is a new mix and match plan that includes parental controls. Parents can easily keep track of where their kids are, limit how much time is spent online, and set content filters by using an app. There's also a safety mode that comes automatically enabled to prevent overage fees.